guys it's Lynn here hope everyone's having a fantastic day now in this video I'm going to show you how you can grow Venus flytrap from seeds now I did a video a few days ago on how to harvest the seeds from a Venus flytrap and I've also made a video on how to pollinate flowers on a Venus flytrap plant to get seed and I've got the links to both of them videos up above, so before you watch this, um, check out them videos guys, that tells you about how to get seed and also how to harvest seed. And this video, I'm actually going to be sowing the seeds. Now, possible also you may have also already got Venus flytrap seeds either online and this video also um, is the same for this as well. And what you need to do, it's really important guys, that when it comes to sowing the seed, that the soil you use is completely nutritionless. Now, you can either use carnivorous plant soil, and that's soil that's specially for carnivorous plants like Venus flytraps and Saracenias um, and Nepenthes, um, or you can use pure peat or sphagnum moss. In this case, I'm using pure peat, peat moss, that has got no additional at all nutrients to it. And if you were to use a normal houseplant soil or any other like garden soil, then this could easily kill your plants, all your carnivorous plants. And when you're sowing Venus flytrap seeds, it's important that you use a completely nutritionless soil. As in this case, I'm using pure peat moss with no added nutrients. So do not use normal house, houseplant compost. I'm stating this because it's so important. Um, use only soil, especially for carnivorous plants and Venus flytraps. And either just sphagnum moss or pure peat moss. And what you need to do then is use two empty containers. Now you can use any type of container. In this case, I'm using two old fruit containers that I had um, some, some tomatoes in there. And make sure that it's thoroughly clean. And I'm actually so I've actually filled them up with pure peat moss, and I'm soaking them in rainwater to let, allow the rainwater to go right through into the soil, so the soil is thoroughly soaked. Now the reason why I'm using rainwater is the same reason why I'm using um, peat moss um, is because tap water contains nutrients in it and this will kill your Venus flytraps as it will many of your other um, carnivorous plants so only either use pure rainwater that's clean as possible um, or if you can't get hold of rainwater then use distilled water either would be good but please do not use tap water or mineral water as um, this can also kill your plants so again just using completely nutritionless soil and rainwater letting the rainwater completely soak up into the containers and you'll know when the soil is completely wet um, because it should almost be boggy unlike normal when you sow in normal seeds then you only usually only have the soil lightly moist but in this case, because they are bog plants, um, you need to actually keep the, um, the soil medium very wet and boggy. And um, I've got them soaking in here, as you can see. You'll know when it's completely ready to sow the seeds, when uh, you check over the surface of the, uh, the soil and you can see the water and it's quite boggy. So that's it, that's important. And then now it gets to sowing the seeds. And um, got them in here in this little bag. I sowed them uh, a few days ago, as you guys who watched the video would know. Very exciting, as it's seed from my own plant. And then all you need to do here is tip them onto the, um, the hands, make sure that there's none left, obviously. Best in time to tip them out onto the, using a white plate. Maybe like the groovy plate, guys. I think that's all of them. And then all you need to do then is um, literally just sprinkle them on they're very small seeds now you can either use it whichever method you prefer now the reason why i'm using two different trays is because god forbid you use the one and you happen to get a fungus or mold attack then uh, oh my gosh at least you've got two trays less chance of it happening and what i'm going to do is just literally sprinkle them on the top just like pepper they are very small and then equal amounts of each to so see the seeds are really really tiny like so and just sprinkle them on as long as you're sort of sprinkling them so they're not all clustering together so they're going to have plenty of space to grow just make sure that um, by using a white plate as well it means you can see any of the seeds that are sort of flying off and by the way I'm only doing this outside because it's a completely windless day today but if it's a windy day and you're sowing uh, Venus flytrap seeds I wouldn't do it on a windy day in case they all blow off this one just gone onto the tray there and I think that's all of them just double check that there's none 
in the back so they are really tiny and um, that's it so that's them sewed now the reason I just want to mention this is that in case any of you guys wonder I always normally when I'm sowing seeds I always recommend sowing um, sorry getting the soil medium sterilized first and that either by doing that either in a microwave or in an oven but in this case that might be a little seed possibly not. in this case I don't do that and the reason being Venus fly traps are less prone to fungal attacks um, unlike cacti seedlings which are very prone to it so I haven't sterilized the soil in this case but again it's entirely up to you um, I've just used the peat moss as it is and thoroughly soaked it now the seeds are, are sprinkled on top now it's time to um, put them into the bags now you can use whatever method you really prefer to do some people prefer to sew them and then just just leave them as they are and then just keep them watered regularly or actually keep them as they are some in sitting actually in a bit of water rainwater and then keep them like that they start to germinate within a within anything from a few days to a month but in this case i like to use the baggy method and I do this with my seedlings as well, um, sorry, my cacti seedlings, which works really well. But the reason why I'm going to do this is because also with the carnivorous plants, including the Venus flytrap seedlings, they do like to be kept in a very high humidity atmosphere, especially when they're germinating, because unlike other plants that, um, you know, high humidity can kill them, they like a lot of humidity. So by growing them in these baggies, it keeps the humidity in there, almost acting like a little bit of a mini greenhouse for them. So it's, it stops them from drying out too fast. So once they're zipped up in here, that possibly could be another seed, not sure. But uh, once you've got them in here, you don't have to worry about watering them at all for weeks. It's brilliant. And then once they've germinated, what, you, what I will do then, once I've seen signs of them germinating, is with these zip bags, these baggies as I call them, you can obviously slightly open them like that over a number of days and you can close them again but keeping them open in every few days once they've germinated it helps to keep the ventilation on as well but um so you keep them in the bags pretty much until they're big enough to come out and in this case also recommend as well with the baggies is labeling them what it is in this case venus flytrap dionea muscipula and the date it's been sown which is july 2016 place them in like so now I normally use the, the baggies for my cacti seedlings because it keeps them in a sterile atmosphere. But as I say, you don't need to worry as I haven't sown, uh, haven't in this case sterilised the soil with a Venus flytrap. This is purely just to keep them in a bit of a humidity, high humidity. Zip it up like so. So that's the one done. There. And then the other one. You, don't, you certainly don't have to use the baggies to grow these in um, at all. It's just I prefer to because it keeps the humidity in and because it's so, so warm in my conservatory at the moment that they'll just dry out so fast. But so you can also keep them in a bowl of water um, so they don't dry out. So you haven't really got to worry about them rotting unlike many other type of seedlings as these like the humidity. So, so there you go like so. And then... Um, all you need to do then is they can take anything from a week up until a month to five weeks to germinate and you'll know obviously when they germinate you see the little green green coming out and I'm going to do an update video when these do germinate so stay tuned for that guys and obviously you want to keep them in a sunny spot because they love to have lots of sunshine also the heat will help to encourage them to germinate faster as well um, so anything uh, if, you, if you're in a cold place don't put them in a cold garage or anything like that um, a nice warm spot um, encourage them to germinate much faster and they like plenty of light plenty of sunshine but bear in mind if you've got them in a, a very very sunny window behind glass you don't want them to boil because that will also uh, cook them and prevent them from germinating so you want a nice warm sunny spot but away from it strong intense heat because um, the last thing you want to do is fry them and there you go that's really all it is to it as i say once they have germinated then you can just undo the bags um, and then just uh, leave them to ventilate during the day and uh, that, the, the bag helps to keep the uh, humidity in as well and also helps keep slugs off I always find <laughs> so to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of happy growing as always from Ireland until the next video guys bye